We're talking about characteristics of life, and the next characteristic of life is that living things reproduce. All species have the ability to reproduce. This is not essential to survival for the individual, but it is essential for the continuation of the species. So it means that every individual doesn't reproduce. Every individual living thing doesn't reproduce, but that the species as a whole, um, some individuals do. Inheritance. Organisms transmit hereditary or genetic information to their offspring, and they do that through DNA. DNA is the genetic or the hereditary information in cells. DNA contains instructions for making all of the chemical structures and um, all of the structures and the chemicals in the cell. We'll spend a unit on DNA because it's that important. DNA is in every body cell, so one term to memorize is that a body cell is also called a somatic cell. That's different from a gamete. So a gamete is found in the ovaries or the testes. They only have about, um, well, they only have exactly half the DNA of a somatic cell. So a somatic cell is a body cell. That means a liver cell or a kidney cell or a skin cell or a brain cell or a blood cell, any of the regular body cells. So the DNA in every body cell is exactly alike or identical. So the DNA in your skin cells is exactly the same as the DNA in your um, osteocytes, which are your bone cells. The reason that they're different is that you read different parts of the DNA. So you can have an instruction booklet on how to make an airplane, and if you read the part on how to put the wheels on, well, then you can go ahead and put the wheels on. You would read a different part of that book in order to make the um, airplane, the, in order to make the wings, and you would read a totally different part of the book in order to put the steering wheel on. So your cells are like that. You have the instruction booklet in every cell, but you only read the parts that you need for each individual cell. There are two types of sexual re uh, sorry, there are two types of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So the key for sexual reproduction, um, there's two things. One is that you have two parents, and the other is that the babies are different from the parents. So hereditary information from two different organisms of the same species are combined. An egg and a sperm unite, and they are called a zygote. So this is another term to know. A zygote is a fertilized egg. So here's the egg, here's the sperm. Once the sperm fertilizes the egg, then you have a zygote. A zygote contains hereditary information from both parents. When you put an A in front of the word, it means not. So apolitical and political we talked about. We talked about... Um, did we talk about cellular and acellular? Cellular would be that it has a cell, or it's made out of a cell, and acellular would mean it's not. Um, sexual means that you have two parents. Asexual means not, so you just have one parent. So hereditary information from one, usually unicellular, but not always, um, organism that divides. The resulting cells contain identical hereditary information. So this was once one bacterium, and now it's dividing. Pretty soon it's going to be two different bacteria, and they are exactly identical to each other. Genetic information from just a single parent. So let's compare sexual and asexual reproduction. The type of reproduction can either be sexual or asexual. And we'll talk about good and bad. And you can pause for a little bit and decide what you think should go in here. I'm going to just go through the chart with you. Um, so the thing that's good about sexual reproduction is that you end up making variety. So the babies end up looking different from each other and different from the parents. And they're different in lots of ways, not just in the way that they look. So let's say their immune systems are different from each other a little bit. So if there's a virus that sweeps through the population, it might affect some of the individuals, but not all of them because they're all a little bit different from each other. That's the thing that's bad about asexual reproduction. They are exactly identical. There's no variety. Identical. So if you have organisms that are exactly identical, and there's a virus that preys on them, then that virus is going to have a bunch of easy targets because they're all going to be exactly the same. 
the thing that's bad about sexual reproduction is you have to find a mate. It's time consuming. You only give your babies half of your DNA, so you're taking care of, if you're an organism that takes care of the babies, um, you're only taking care of an organism with half of your DNA. It can be um, dangerous if you're a firefly and you're um, shining your light. That's a good way to say, hey, predators, come eat me. Um, but it's also the way they, they find each other. If you're a peacock, you've got, in a male peacock, you've got these long, beautiful tail feathers, which um, are necessary for the females to say, hey, you're, you're good enough to mate with. But they're kind of bad because um, predators can, can catch you a lot more easily. They're really heavy and um, they're really bright, so predators can find you easily and catch you easily. The thing that's good about asexual reproduction is it's fast. Um, you don't need to find a partner. You can just make your babies all by yourself, um, and it, so it's quicker. So the good thing about sexual reproduction is there's a great variety among the offspring. And the bad thing is that you need two individuals, it's time consuming, um, can be dangerous. The good thing about asexual reproduction is that you only need one individual and it's usually fast. And the bad thing is that there's no variety, all the offspring are the same. So any type of selective pressure um, might kill all of the offspring. Living things adapt to their environment. That's our next characteristic of life. Populations of organisms change or evolve over time or over generations. So this explains how many different kinds of organisms or species came into existence. And it explains how modern organisms are related to past organisms. It also shows how organisms are related to each other. So these are two different types of bunnies. This one um, lives in places that are not um, white necessarily, or at least not for long. So this one might live um, around here in Massachusetts, and it might blend in in a forest environment, whereas the white one would live um, up north where it's snowy more, and so it's going to blend in in the white environment. If you take this one and move it here, it would really show up here. If you take this one and move it here, it would really show up there. So this one is best suited to its environment, and that one is best suited to its environment. Um, evolution explains in part why organisms look and behave the way they do, and it provides a basis for explaining the relationships among different groups of organisms. So we have a whole unit on evolution that we'll do toward the end of the year. And we're going to stop for right now.